before <laughs> it was that good I messed up all my ring walk that we had planned to start running to the ring <laughs> I was excited I lost it I lost the rack completely I was like I'm gonna sit down on this chair whatever um, Frank massive massive thank you Frank um, a lot of people don't know but Frank brought me back from the brink of death and believed in me and gave me a big contract to box again um, when everybody else was probably scared to get me in the ring again. So, uh, massive thanks, Frank. And not only did he do it this time, but he'd done it the first time as well. Um, he got me to fight with Joey Abel, Derek Chisora for the mandatory position, which it led me to fight Vladimir Klitschko. <laughs> yeah, and then, no, he, can't just and then he, he, he brought me back again from, from being like a fat man, 28 stone, to, to get me the, the return of the Mac in Manchester, which was absolutely epic, 20,000 at home. From being a big old fat boy six months before to selling 20,000 tickets, and you know, it really was the return of the Mac against Sefer. Nobody believed, did they, Frank? Yeah. And then when he announced that we're going to go to Belfast and we sold 35,000 tickets at the, um, the what was it called? Uh, yeah, Park, Windsor Park. Windsor Park. Um, and I didn't have a great performance against Francesco Pianetti because I wasn't even there yet, I wasn't even ready. And then I said, do you know what, Frank? I was supposed to have a couple more fights, Frank, wasn't yeah, I? Two more. I was supposed to have two more, same level as Peanut and Sefer. Um, I said to Frank, you know what? Get me wilder, because I can't do this. I'm either the best in the world or I'm not. And he's all here to call me a liar. Um, and I wasn't, I'll, I'll, I hold my hands up to this. I wasn't ready for Deontay Wilder the first time. It was too quick. Um, but we took it anyway, because I'm a fighting man. Uh, I wanted to prove to the world that I'm back with a bang. We had that great fight over there, Frank, and great, you know, great. it's gone on from there, really. Uh, it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's been like a, snow, a big snowball rolling down a mountain. Um, and it's peaked out here at, uh, at Wembley Stadium. Well, a European record. Yeah. And, uh, a big shout out to Top Rank and uh, Brad, uh, Todd, Bob, everybody else in the office over there. Um, they made it happen in America, in the home of the Gypsy King, Las Vegas. Uh, you know, made some big, big nights happen with a Wilder 2 fight, Wilder 3, Swartz, Walling. Um, it was unbelievable, you know, they treat me like a superstar. Um, I went on an American voyage to crack America, conquered America, so to say. Um, and I, I was brought back to England to a hero's welcome. And, and what a welcome I had tonight for about 94,000 of my fellow countrymen. Um, it was fantastic. So, you know, I was here at the press conference only a few weeks ago on my own when it all started and single-handedly sold out 94,000 tickets and I don't believe there's an entertainer in the world in sports on his own can sell 94,000 tickets without an opponent. So yeah, I pat myself on the back for that. Yeah. <laughs> How many people, how did a cheer he got when he came into the ring that Tyson got? Yeah. They were Tyson fans, Tyson's fans, all of them. And if you, even the couple who may not be, they certainly were, were by the time the fight was over. It was a phenomenal performance. For me, he is without a doubt the best heavyweight of his generation. He would be a great heavyweight in any generation. And he's the best, I've got to say it now, probably the best fighter I've ever been involved with. Frank's been involved with a lot of fighters, so big respect for that, Frank. And that's, that's, that's a fact, because where you come back from, what you've done, yeah. and what you continue doing, it's just amazing. It's amazing. And in, in most of the fights you come back against Wilder twice, you was an underdog. Yeah, and come off the canvas twice. Yes. And they, no, you've been betting off this, bet, betting you as an underdog, yeah. and, uh, and you, you went and done it in the other guy's backyard. You know, I'd like to share with everybody in the room, um, what did I say, Frank, tonight in the changing room to you, to everybody, to me brothers, me dad, trainers? What did I say? Do you remember before the fight? Come on, tell me again. 
Do you remember, Sugar? I, this, I didn't hear it. I just heard everybody cheering and laughing. I said, this is going to oh, be an exactly. exceptional performance. I'm going to put on a proper show. That's exactly yeah. it. I just felt it. I could feel it. You know, I felt good. My feet were good. My jab was good. Jab was jab was jabbing head right off him. Derek is all done that. Yeah, because he, Derek Chisora is now homeless, sorry to everybody. He lost his house to Joseph Parker, so we're lucky. Um, and Derek, I have got a house next to my house in Morecambe. You are welcome in it any time, my brother. But the moral to the story is, never bet your house on something unless you're one million percent sure. And you can never be sure in the heavyweight division. So, now he's homeless, good luck to him. Questions? Many congratulations, congratulations to Sugar, all the whole team. I was there, your presser for your return, so amazing stuff. Thank you, thank you. I don't think it really is. I feel like you're getting better. Yeah, you know, one thing that has happened with me, um, when I brought Sugar in for the last couple of fights, he took me back to being a ranked novice. He made me feel like a piece of shit, and that's without swearing or anything. He made me feel terrible as a boxer. Like, he took the lineal heavyweight champion, heavyweight champion of the world, undefeated. And he, he, he's the only man who could ever make me feel like a bum, like I've never had a fight in my life. But it takes a special mentality to go back to brass, brass tacks and back, back to brass roots and start again. And we put a lot of time in trouble, didn't we, over the last few years. What people don't know about, all the camps we've had. Without fighting, we've been in camp, we've been in Miami, we've been in Vegas, we've been in Dallas, we've been everywhere. Training, training, training with his style. Um, and I think, it was a, I think it was an absolute fantastic camp because we had it in Morecambe Bay, where I'm from, with a good Lancashire, fresh air and sea air. Um, everyone thought that it might not have been a good idea to have it at home, but Andy Lee said to me, you train well at home, a couple, last year it was, so we went at home and we was very happy. And we practiced and practiced and practiced, and long range punching, using the jab off the shoulder. And I think everyone will agree with me in here tonight, the shot that done kept catching him was a check hook, wasn't it, um, yeah. Shub, yeah, I kept clipping him with that check hook and we practiced on the pads, wouldn't we? Bang, 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 bang. And then the one thing that amazed me was I clipped the body snatcher with the left hook, yeah, <laughs> to the body and I went, you heard body snatcher, didn't you? And he went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny. <coughs> Thank you. The answer to your question without rambling on is, am I getting better? Hell yeah, I'm getting better. I think you're all right. Thank you. Well, Congrats on another great victory. Thank you. Uh, I noticed, you know, Dillian White was he's pretty front foot heavy, as we know, and he was looked like to be a sucker for the uppercut. Did you know early on in the fight that you were being catching with that shot? I didn't want to let ten of them shots go too early because he, like, like straight one, two, bang, bang, he was catching on his gloves, yeah? I mean, I'll shoot me high, I can hear Andy Lee say, shoot it low, shoot it low, yeah? But I didn't want to bring it up too early because he was, pre he was preparing to block the straight. And I started touching him there, touching him to the body with the, with the uppercut to the body. And then I just sucked his eye and bang, beautiful peach. And it was the time for it. I think, it was, what was it, round five, round six? Six. I was softening him up with the jab. I didn't want to get involved in a, in a brawl, trading punch just like I did against Wilder. I wanted to keep me distance, use me range. And I thought I, box, I thought I was boxing really well. I thought I was using the jab, splashing him up with the jab. He tried to make it rough, fair play to him. He was trying to manhandle me in there, but you know, have you ever tried wrestling with a dinosaur before? I'm like a T-Rex in there, I'm six foot nine, I'm 270 pounds. It's difficult, especially when you're a shorter um, and you're not as quick as well. And he tried hitting me with the elbows, head. He tried not to leave, done a body mini clutch go on me. Um, he was trying everything. He was using the forearms, trying to elbow me. But, I mean, when you try and cheat in a fight, you always come up second best because he went to nut me and he got caught, which was his own fault. But like I've always said, boxing is not ballet dancing, it's a contact sports fight. So I ain't complaining. Dylan done his thing. And for the man that's been avoided for the best part of two, three years, he's been mandatory for forever. Um, he deserves his credit, you know, he got his shot. He made millions of dollars, thanks to me. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my performance, and I hope he's happy with his performance because he didn't fight a world champion tonight. I ain't no world champion. I'm a legend in this game. And um, there ain't, you can't deny it. I'm the best heavyweight's ever been. 
There ain't never been one who could beat me. Because you know why? I don't have to feel I'm not just feeling like confident. Six foot nine frame, 270 pound weight, can move like a middleweight, can hit like a thunderstorm, and can take a punch like anybody else. <laughs> yeah, and I've got balls like King Kong, a heart of a lion, the mindset of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I just can't, I just, it is what it is, but you know, it was a very special night. Um, and what, what a way to top it all off, Frank. Right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know, it was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I wasn't 22 months out of the ring. I didn't have a little daughter die before, before my last fight. I brought her back to life again. I'm sleeping <clears> in the hospital bed floor. Four or five weeks before I fought Wilder yeah. 3. People don't know all this. I don't complain. I don't make excuses. And he asked me, are you at your best for the Wilder 3? I said, yeah, I am. Because it wasn't Deontay's fault. It was my fault. And I had to deal with my own stuff, but we had injury-free camp. Um, and I trained for 14 weeks for this camp. Um, so yeah, it was good. I felt good. I felt fresh, and I felt I felt sharp. And the performance told it all tonight. Super. And as you said, you look unbeatable right now at the moment. Uh, you're on top, obviously, the best anyway in the world, and you're all time great. And I know adrenaline's running high right now at the moment. So what will go into your decision as you move forward? and take some time and clear your head to see what you will do next going forward. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you this one for free. Before I fought Deontay Wilder 3, I was in my house in Vegas and I said to Paris, I said, this is going to be the last fight, mm. I, I just don't want to do it anymore. And she said, yes, I'm happy, it won't be the last fight. And then after the fight, I said to her in the shower, I said, it's definitely the last fight, there's no more of this. And then, I was happy with that decision and I get a call from Frank saying, you know, we can do a homecoming fight at Wembley. And I was like, I said to Paris, I said, I've got to go one more time. I've got to get the old boots out again. And, and you know, it was a tough decision because I was happy being in Morecambe retired. I used to go to the gym to watch Joe Parker train and the boys, Tommy. I used to say to Andy, I'm happy I'm retired. <laughs> do you remember Andy? Um, and then I come back for a big, big fight at home, and it's been amazing. I couldn't have topped it off. It's been a fairy tale a few years. It's been absolutely um, more than I ever dreamed of uh, as a kid and as an adult. So big thank you to everybody who's helped me in my career, promoters, trainers, managers, um, all the journalists, all the TV companies, ESPN Plus, ESPN, BT Sport, Box Office, BT Sport, everybody, because everybody played a big part in, in the the making of the Gypsy King. I wasn't I wasn't uh, wasn't just made easy, it took a long time so it uh, was I'm very happy with my career. I've won it. By the way, I do take a lot of pride in this and I know pride's not the best thing to be but very proud of I've won two English titles, two British titles, two Commonwealth titles, the Irish title, the European title, WBO Intercontinental, WBO International, WBO Super, WBA Super, IBF, IBO, Ring Magazine, Lineal, WBC, WBC Miami, WBC Global. I've won every belt there is to win. Yeah. There is a belt in the game. I've won every belt in the game. If this was a computer game, it would definitely be completed, for sure. Tyson, you No, 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 oh, microphone. Tyson, congratulations. Thank uh, you. Yeah, performance. You also missed the fact that you were fighter of the year twice as well. I got fight of the year twice. I got Ring Magazine fighter of the year. I got upset of the year. I got comeback of the year. I don't think there's a war I haven't won. I got round of the year. And I almost won inspiration of the year as well. So, yeah, um, not too shabby. Obviously, you're, you're reigning Ring Magazine and WBC <coughs> champion just now. There's a lot of retirement talk, but surely you're going to hold on to your, your championship belts at least for another six months. When it gets to um, Usyk against Joshua 2, there's going to be calls for you to fight the winner of that fight. Will you dismiss it? Will you take your time to think about it? You know what? I've said what I've said, um, and I'm happy with my uh, decisions. I'm going to go home with my wife, my kids. Spent a lot of time on the road. I've been, I've been away a long time. I've, I've fulfilled everything I've ever wanted to fulfill. I, I'm going to retire as the only second heavyweight in history after Rocky Marciano to retire undefeated. Two-time Ring Magazine heavyweight champion of the world. There's never been a Ring Magazine holder in my era, not one of them. And there hasn't been a lineal in my era either because all roads led to the Gypsy King. And I was unbeatable in this game. Is that final? 
I definitely think so. But I'm not ruling out, I will not rule out exhibitions, for sure. I guess some of that Floyd May with the money. Um, you know, I want to have fun. You know, I'm an entertainer. You saw tonight, I entertain. It's what I do best. I'm an entertainer. Um, so I want to have a lot of fun. You know, big Francis Nagani was here today. He's on my hit list in an exhibition fight, however he wants it, in a cage, in a boxing ring, boxing gloves, UFC gloves. We can make it happen. I think everyone wants to see he's a monster of a guy. I'm a monster of a guy, so it'll be a clash of the titans for sure. Thank you. Thanks, and this is Matt for Into Boxing. Yep. First off, congratulations. Um, second of all, um, with everything you've achieved in your career, where does that entrance of coming out from a 94,000 people rank? Because you must have to pinch yourself. You've been away to America, yeah. you've come back. Did you, did you expect this when the fight got announced? That was the icing on the cake, you know. Um, the ring, the ring walk um, music and thing was was planned. It was something that I wanted to do. Um, very, it means a lot to me that song, uh, the Big Small song, because it was just a dream. It was all a dream, um, and it all come to reality. So it was um, it was unbelievable. It was just an amazing night. Ring walk was very special to me. Um, I got lost in ring walk actually. I started running, screaming, and jumping. I was on fire tonight. I really enjoyed myself and. Um, it was phenomenal, you know, the fans were amazing. Everybody, the whole thing, the whole show was amazing. I could, if you could have planned the perfect show, perfect ring walk, perfect entrance, perfect fight, I couldn't have planned that any better. Look at me. I don't, I've not looked in the mirror, but I don't feel that's a mark on me. I never took any damaging blows. I've got out of the ring in one piece, like I said to God in the beginning, at where I was there. I said, let both men get out of the ring in one piece. Dillian's up, hopefully he goes home to his family in one piece, and he does. And we can both both go home and enjoy our uh, spoils of war. That's what it's about. And that lady there asked three times, so I'm going to come to you next. <laughs> Fire away. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. So, I heard you say you're at your happiest when on the ring, and you're getting paid to for doing something you absolutely love, and yeah. you would do it for free anyway. Yes. So, first of all, how does it feel to be in this position? What are the qualities that allowed you to be above all other human being that tried to defeat you on the ring? And also, are you really sure you're ready to give up the adrenaline, the lifestyle, and the ring to retire right now? It was absolutely fantastic. You know, I feel at home in that ring. I feel like a, a dolphin in the, in the water in that ring. Um, it's what I do best. It's what I was born to do. You know, people are born and they never find a calling card. Some people do. Some people don't. But I really do believe that I was always meant to be heavyweight champion of the world. There's nothing else that was ever going to be. From being a little boy, I was always destined to be the heavyweight champion. I did there was nobody that didn't believe it. My family all believed. So it was um, been a very special career to me. Very special. Um, WWE have announced the UK pay-per-view show in September in Cardiff. It's the first big stadium show here since 1992. Yeah. A question to you, Gypsy King. Are you going to be there? Are you going to be competing? Sorry, can you say that again? Because I missed you. Um, the WWE yeah. announced a UK pay-per-view show yeah. um, in September in Cardiff. It's the first big stadium show here since, since 1992. Yeah. Are you going to be there? Don't rule me out with fighting there. Um, you might see me at SummerSlam coming up soon. I've got to speak to Vince and the boys. Maybe make this happen. I know there's Drew McIntyre has been saying a lot of things about me. I have to knock him out. Like I did his pal. Um, you know, I'd love to be at Cardiff. I'd love to be back at, back in the centre stage in the UK, um, especially for the wrestling. I enjoyed it last time in Saudi Arabia. It was it was fantastic. So to come here and do it would be phenomenal. Um, and I'm gonna we're definitely gonna make a bit of contact and, and see can we make that summer slump in the reality. <clears throat> I didn't think much of it, to be fair. Um, it, did it confuse me? No. Because I did it straight back to him in round two. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> it was like he came out southpaw, I came out southpaw. It was different. And I know Dylan was never going to stick to a southpaw for the full fight because he doesn't do that. And it, it was good, you know. Dylan was a, a tough man. He took a lot of punches, good punches to the body and head, good jab breaking him up. Um, Strong man, big, tough, strong man, but 
the range, my range is, is, is very special. I can keep them at that range. And if they walk into me, he started to, Andy Lee was saying in the corner, he's gonna, he's gonna chuck it all away and he's gonna come straight at you because he, he's, gonna, he's gonna get impatient. And Trudeau was going, right. So what Trudeau said to me around five, he went, I want you to break this mother beep, beep, beep up. He said, unload on it. He said, hit him to the body with that right hand and hit him to the top with it. Let him have it, won't you show? Sure? Send it straight down the middle he was going. And I, and I think it was around five, around five, eight into the body, bang, with a left hook, and I hurt him. And then I put one downstairs to the right. It was good, you know, we had a good game plan. The game plan, I don't know, did you think it worked to what we were saying on the garden yesterday morning, Jay? Yeah, so, and when he started walking forward like that, pushed it straight down the middle and then right up, bang, you know. You actually told me, at the end of the round, at the end of the fifth round, that's what, it was this round, the sixth round, you were trying to get him Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, Carlson, was, uh, how would you rate that, that finisher? Was that the best punch you ever threw? And was and possibly the last, obviously. I threw some good punches in my career. But it was definitely, definitely Wembley Stadium showstopper, wasn't it? Big right up I got. I think Lennox Lewis could definitely be proud of that. Um, it was definitely a uh, great shot. And I was very happy with referee Mark Lyson. He'd done a fantastic job because if he would have allowed it to continue and me to storm into him and hit him two or three more, he may have been in some serious trouble. So big shout out to the ref and he made the right call there. Fantastic uh, call because he was all over the place. I was actually concerned, even though I just chinned him, that it may have been allowed, and I was a like, no ref, don't let me go on, because I had to take him out. I would have had to plow into him again and hurt him. And I didn't really want to do that, but the referee made the right decision, and, and that was it. Oh, just time and time again, the people that do write you off, you prove them on. Uh, prove them wrong. Just yeah. a message to them. I know, you know, it won't bother you, but just a message to the people that do continue to doubt you. Know, I don't think they doubt me. I think they love me. 94,000 at Wembley, the biggest crowd ever in this in this country, in Europe. Um, you know, people don't doubt me. They love me in this country, and I love them. 94,000 of my fellow countrymen and women packed in here tonight, spent their hard-earned money on tickets, um, and I, I am um, I'm overwhelmed with the support I've had. You know, 10 years ago, I, I couldn't sell 10,000 tickets. Even when I went to, to Germany, I was the underdog to fight Klitschko in his own town. I was like, I've always been the opponent. I've been on the road fighter, a bit like um, Marvin Agla. Road warrior, just give him a pack, send him over there. Send the big Jippo in, get in. And he goes to Germany, beats Vlad, goes to America as an opponent. I'm always in the away corner as well. And then it was about time I got my just deserves as the, uh, the home fighter against Eric Chisora twice. Yeah. I was the away fighter. I've been the underdog my whole life. I'm still under look at me, my fat as, my fat as anything. But um, the old fat boy can fight. Um, and you know what it is, no matter how many times people put you down and write you off in life, never pay attention to it because it doesn't mean anything. Because I proved, as just a, a normal, normal looking man, average Joe, that anything is possible. No matter where you are in your life, how dark of a place you're in, it doesn't get any darker than committing suicide now, is there? Um, to come back to to lose all that weight, to lose over 10 stone in weight and get back mentally well again and regain the crown jewels um, in boxing. It's been a fantastic career and you should never let anybody uh, crush your dreams because anything is possible and I'm definitely proved that that is true. Thank you. I didn't think we'd ever see a, a retirement shot like we saw with Carl Frosch. And he's always said that finishing his career like that with one unbelievable shot at Pat Wembley made his death in a way easier. Do you think that will be similar with you? That it was just such a perfect ending, a walk away knockout? You know what? If it was a knockout and I was very happy with the knockout. But if it would have been a 12 round points decision, I would have been happy with that. And for me, it's not, it's not about anything else but getting the W. It's always been about getting the W. Um, and lately, we found out that the big GK is as strong and as powerful as any heavyweight that has been. But I didn't used to use it before. I was like a slick boxer trying to slip and slide and not get touched. But now I'm using the weight on them and, and I'm really letting them have it. it, um, it it's been paying dividends in the last few fights, as you've seen. I, it's been like, my, my last few fights have been like the gunfight at the OK Corral with uh, or Deontay. Um, but with Deontay Wilder, you can't try and box him. You can't out box him because if you have boxing for 12 rounds and he lands one punch and you wake up on the floor, it's pointless. So 
you've got to drag him into a fight. Um, and I showed that. I've, I've put down, kissed the canvas four times against the man. We've had a good battle, Roy Allen and, and, and Dylan here. Everyone thought he was a, um, a dangerous man. Well, he was. But I uh, showed I was, I was levels above that. So yeah, it's been it's been fantastic, and you know, like I say, I've enjoyed my career. It's been a fantastic career, and I'm 34 in a minute. Every good dog has its day, and I know Frank will be up on on happy about that, and top and top rank. But you know, there's there's a lot of money to be earned. But for me, you know, I come from fuck all. I come from nothing. You know, it's never been about money. I'm not a money person. I drive around in a 07 um, Passat on 56 plate diesel. I don't care. I don't care what I've got. It's never been about money to me. I know a lot of people with money, big money, but none of them are happy. Not one of them. And I know money can't make happiness. It's not even been about belts for me. It's not been about legacies. It's not been about anything apart from punching a motherfucker's face right in on the night. That's all it's ever been about. Excuse the language. All I ever want to do is win. The money aside, money's beautiful, great. It's great to be paid for what you do. And if you're good at something, Ben Davison told me, if you enjoy something and you're good at it, you'll get paid for it. So I enjoy boxing, I was good at it, and I've been paid for it, but it's not the be all and end all or anything. I can end up in a council flat at any time, don't worry about that. Um, so it is what it is, and would it change me as a person? No. Do I need a mansion and a Rolls Royce? I don't. I've got them, but I don't need them. <laughs> But it doesn't, doesn't make of you as a man. You, a man is what you are in here. And if you're a good person in here, and you've got fuck all, you'll do for me. But if you're a millionaire and you're horrible, I don't want to know you. Because I've only got time for good people. Did you see if you'd not been used to belt, Tyson? Huh? Did you see if you'd not been used to belt? I didn't see, to be honest. But, um, I don't know. Tyson, um, it was a pretty, pretty brutal knockout. Have yeah. you spoke to Dylan afterwards? You said you back up. Have you been in the changing room? How is he? What, what's your message to him? Spoke to, to Dylan after the fight. Um, I gave him a kiss and a cuddle and a hug. Thanked him. Um, and I told him, I said, you'll be a world champion, Dylan. Um, but tonight, you just had to meet a great in the game, and that was it. Um, he, he come and give it his best. No, listen, there's no embarrassment losing to a better man on the line. At least you've got the guts to go in there and have a fight. People will say, oh, Dylan White was shit. They'll say this, and I've seen them. People 